directory from it. Good evening, my friends. I just wanted to do a little video and talk a little bit about what's going on. Um, obviously, there's an uproar about uh, the uh, whistleblower, uh, part of the BLM, that's uh, exposed a lot of truth, a lot of truth that uh, we've known about for a long time. We've seen in the discovery. We've been studying it for uh, over a year now. And also, we lived it. And uh, so these things are something that are not a surprise to us by any means, in any way. Uh, we told people that there were snipers on the hill, that they were threatening our families, that their crosshairs were on us. We told them they had surveillance equipment, high-tech surveillance equipment with lasers uh, pointed at our front door. Uh, we didn't know what it was about, but we knew that that was happening. And all of these things have been covered up by the government. We've actually... Um, several times, many times throughout this year, have requested information on it and they've denied it and said things like we're going on a, a, a fishing expedition, uh, trying to get information and, and say there were things that really wasn't, and then we find out, sure enough, that they were. The discovery clearly shows that the prosecutor, uh, 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 Stephen Myrie, uh, did everything he did, he could, to cover up that there were snipers um, uh, he even had uh, BLM agents come back in a year later and re-clarify their testimony to say that they didn't act as a spotter or they didn't act as a sniper. And uh, these are the things that were going on. We see them in the discovery and it's, it, you know, it's primarily done by the U.S. Uh, Attorney's Office and uh, I believe Steve Myrie was a huge uh, player in this. Um, we also see where they just lied over and over and over to the grand jury. Um, we've seen this for year, you know, for the, the time we've been in prison for the last, almost two years, and it's been very frustrating uh, to us to see it because we know that it was a lie. We see that it was a lie. We see that they lied to the grand jury over and over and over again. That they created this narrative, and then they tried to sculpture the discovery to to follow the narrative. And uh, it was a lie. It was a lie from the beginning. And uh, so it, it feels really good to actually uh, have somebody from their side, the inside, a whistleblower, to actually say these things. But they're not a surprise to us by any means. And so, um, and I could go into great detail, you know, uh, about how they were a militarized unit, how they were, they came, they, they followed a militarized uh, procedures. They said they were a militarized units. They had drones in the in the up in the sky, high enough you couldn't even see them. They had crosshairs up on our family's home, and off to the side you see in the videos with the with the drone crosshairs and all the other uh, technology that's on this drone. And over on the side you see where it says arm or disarm. Except the principle that when you assume somebody is a terrorist, they can be targeted for assassination, even American citizens. That affects all of us eventually. You don't want to translate our rule of law into a rule of mob rule. Discussion so, about what's going on here. Now, history proves that the tendency of a central government is to become tyrannical, which is why our Constitution created the federal government in a limited and defined capacity. George Mason said that when the resolution of enslaving America was formed in Great Britain, the British Parliament was advised by an artful man who was governor of Pennsylvania to disarm the people that it was the best and most effectual way to enslave them. But they should not do it openly, but weaken them and let them sink gradually. That's precisely why the Second Amendment says, shall not be infringed, so you cannot be weakened and sink gradually. Now, you, you had asked, where are the evidences of, of an overreaching federal government? And I saw the mention of the fact that the, the, president, the Department of Justice has said that they believe that the President of the United States is authorized in ordering the killing of U.S. citizens on U.S. soil by drones. 
That is not a lie. That is an actual written statement by Eric Holder on the de from the Department of Justice, and you can go read it. You can actually read the Department of Justice white paper, which says that the Department of Justice has rationalized in some quasi-legal 16-page paper that they not only have the, the ability to, to assassinate U.S. citizens anywhere on the globe, they have the ability to do that, and in their very own words, without any evidence whatsoever, and that they can do that, and the courts have no jurisdiction to tell them they can't. So if the federal government can assassinate its own citizens with no evidence, these are not my words, go read the paper yourself, and, and they can do it anywhere, then, then what are you going to do? And, and, the assault, and the assassination doesn't have to be on the battlefield. These are people that are completely removed and engaged in no activity whatsoever. So if you have a federal government who thinks that they can do that sometime in the future, what will be the limitation of them doing that to you tomorrow? And that's what they had on our family's home. And they also had it on the protesters. And that's they had it on the protest site. And it had infrared te technology, it had night vision technology, and then of course it, it, it was capable to uh, view uh, very closely from a long, long ways away. And that, that's just a very touch of what the technology and, and what they were doing to an American family on American soil. And, and that's why people came. They felt that this was wrong. And, and now it's good to see that now, you know, America is seeing that it was wrong. Um, again, I could go into great detail about uh, what's in the discovery, what's not in the discovery that we know it should be, what's been withheld, and who did it. And, uh, you know, they were, they, it was the Bureau of Land Management, the FBI as well. And just as a side note, when it's talked about Clive and Bundy and the other people's uh, uh, pictures on the wall and then they got X's through them. The BLM took a picture of that and then posted it all over laughing and, and enjoying that. But where were they at when they took a picture of it? They were in the FBI's office. So it was the FBI that had the pictures up there and had the X's in them. Completely inappropriate. And then the, then the BLM to be able to just post it around and do all those things like life is nothing. Like my father's life is nothing. Like Eric Parker's life is nothing. Well, I'm here to tell you that life is worth something. Dr. Red's life was worth something. And the way to just treat life like that, like it means nothing. It's just completely inappropriate. However, here is not because of that. My point is because I'm afraid that we're going to lose a touch of what's really happening, what really has happened here. Because we have an unconstitutional land agency, a federal agency, and it's not, but I'm going to just stick to that, coming down inside the states and literally putting its people in fear and forcing the states into undue obedience. Forcing us, the people, into undue obedience. And when we allow that to happen, and we don't hold them accountable, and we have no way to hold them accountable, and why? Why don't we have a way to hold Dan Love accountable? Why don't we have a way to hold these people accountable? Because they're outside of the authority that they're acting. They're usurping it. John Adams wrote in 1775, Liberty must be supported at all hazards. We have a right to it derived from our maker, but if we had not, our fathers have bought and purchased it for us with their ease, their estates, their pleasure, and their blood. Samuel Adams said in 1772, among the natural rights of the colonists are these. First life, secondly liberty, third property together, number four, with the right to protect and defend them with the best means possible. The Declaration of Independence reads, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these, life, liberty, 
and the pursuit of happiness. Thomas Paine wrote in his pamphlet, The Crisis, Heaven knows how to put a proper price upon its goods. And how could so celestial an article as freedom be not highly rated? What were all these men talking about? The rights of men. The inherent rights of men. Not the gifts of government. Because you see, if we're sitting in this room today and we believe that liberty, that our rights are gifted to us by government, if we do not know in our hearts and in our souls that liberty is our inherent possession by the nature of our creation, we might as well all pack up and go home because we are wasting our time. This is not a republic. This is a kingdom. But what do we do? when we have a federal government that's completely out of control. There's no way to hold them accountable. You can't vote them in, you can't vote them out. You can't defund them. You can't do anything with them because they're not supposed to be here. These lands and all of these issues are supposed to be handled on a county and a state level. And for them to come in and insert themselves and use force and intimidation to tax us to death and sit, take it up to Washington, D.C., and then dangle it over our heads, saying that if you don't do this, we're not going to fund you. If you don't do that, we're not going to fund you. And if you do do this, we will fund you. Completely controlling the people and literally forcing us into undue obedience. What do you think is going to happen when we go away from the founding principles that, were, that built this nation? What do you think is going to happen? This is what happens. Until we get back to the principles that are outlined in the Constitution, until we stand on those principles, we cannot be free. And it will happen over and over again. And I guarantee it's happening in the Department of Justice, in the FBI, in the Department of Education, in the, every department of the federal, federal government because there is no accountability. And we can't make them accountable. But on a county level, we can get them out. On a, on a state level, we can hold them accountable. And that's the issue here, and we cannot lose sight of that. It's not that we go to Washington, D.C., and boy, we reprimand those, the BLM. Boy, we got to straighten them out to make sure they follow their procedures and, and regulations and their statutes right. No, it's that they should not be in our states, period. And as long as they are, we're in danger. As long as they are, we can't use our lands and resources. And it'll throw us completely into poverty. You cannot live without the land. You cannot survive without the water. And they have deliberately and intentionally and deceptively, over years, over decades, taken the land, taken the water and the resources and the minerals away from the people. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it, and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Until we wonder why we're all struggling to make a living. We have to wake up. We have to get back to those principles that keep us free and keep us happy and keep us prosperous. We have to. I don't want to leave this country. 
I want to stay right here. I love this land. I love this people. I love freedom. But unless we insist and enforce the principles that are found in the Constitution and that the principles that were, we built this nation upon, unless we enforce those principles, we cannot be free. And my children will not be able to even enjoy what I've enjoyed. And that's not good enough for me. I do not want my sons to struggle to feed their families because some federal government is in business for themselves. I want my grandchildren to enjoy the freedom that my grandparents enjoyed. And they cannot do that if they can't go out on the land and produce. They cannot do that if everything they make goes to the federal government in taxes or any government. They should be able to keep the labors of their, the fruits of their fruits labor, of their labors, and give it to their children and provide for their wives and build homes and not in debt. Keep the perspective correct. Of course, the Bureau of Land Management did this. Of course, they did. That's what happens when you don't hold people accountable, when you can't hold people accountable. That's what happens when they're unlimited, when they, when, when they believe they have full control and full power. That's what happens. So of course there's a kill list. Of course you got them, you know, plotting to destroy a family that stands up against them. Of course you do. And the only way to make it right is to hold them to the limitations that are found in the Constitution that we the people set upon them. And that goes across the board. What in the world are they doing in our states? Implementing health care. It is undeniable that there is no power neither enumerated uh, in the federal government it is beyond the control of the federal government to compel citizens to purchase health insurance under threat of penalty by law. For the central government to claim such a power denies the very nature of our republic and makes the constitutional restraints enacted by our founders null and void. The federal government has absolutely no power, no right to create a health care act and if you want to discuss health care, it must be done on the state level, not through an exchange, but through the uh, power and the authority of the people and her legislatures only. Some claim that it must be submitted to as law of the land since the Supreme Court made its declaration from on high. This admits that we are not a republic of sovereign states, but a monarchy. The Supremacy Clause declares the Constitution to be supreme, not the federal government. James Madison said, if the decision of the judiciary is raised above the authority of the sovereign parties to the Constitution, talking about the states, dangerous powers not delegated may not only be usurped and executed by other departments, but by the judicial department as well. You see, we have three branches of federal government. Those three branches of federal government are the executive, the legislative, and the judicial branch. To assume that the judicial branch has the authority to decide what is constitutional or not is like looking at a defendant in the courtroom and saying, excuse me, will you please tell me if you're guilty or innocent? That is an usurpation of power, and it is something that our founders called dangerous. The founding documents and the men who wrote them make it unequivocally clear that the states have the final word on whether their creation, the federal government has trespassed its clearly defined boundaries. Our states are united in a compact that creates the Constitution. James Madison said in the case of deliberate, palpable, and dangerous exercise of other powers not granted, the states have the right, and this is key, because this is your job now. You not only have the right, but you are duty bound to interpose for maintaining within your respective limits the authorities, rights, and liberties of the people. The Virginia General Convention said in 1799 that it would be deceitful of those entrusted with becoming the guardians 
of the state sovereignty, acting upon an oath that you've taken to support and defend the Constitution, to not fight the encroachments of federal power on the states. Implementing land control, implementing the environment regulations, education, what are they doing? The people need to do that themselves within their counties and within their cities and within their states. The federal government needs to go do their jobs that's outlined in the Constitution. It's very clear. And beyond that, they have no power. Beyond that, they have no power. And if we allow them to step across those bounds, which we have, they will abuse it. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Sherry Diwali with Rid Out News. We are live from Spokane Valley, Washington. We're in the office of Washington State Representative Matt Shea, who is here to give us a special report on some very breaking news that will affect every American in this country. Sherry, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it, and I appreciate everything you guys are doing with Read Out News. You've been doing a wonderful job covering the trial down in uh, Nevada. I would like to first start, uh, some of the things I'm going to be talking about today are extremely serious, and uh, I don't want to be overly dramatic, but uh, I think you'll see why here in a second I'm about to say what I'm about to say. Um, I have never had in my entire life ever any inclination to commit suicide. I have never in my entire life uh, taken inappropriate pictures and stored them on my computer. In fact, I've had my computer forensically searched for such images. And uh, generally speaking, I love my wife dearly and uh, we have a wonderful and happy marriage. So with that, everybody's like, whoa, what do you have to say? Well, I want to start uh, with a couple of things. First, uh, there's a very important principle that I would like to start out with, of kind of why what I'm about to say is so important to the American people, and it's this. Um, the people of this state, and this comes from Washington State's Public Records Act, the people of this state do not yield their sovereignty to the agencies that serve them. The people in delegating authority do not give their public servants the right to decide what is good for the people to know and what is not good for them to know. People insist on remaining informed so that they may maintain control over the instruments that they have created. And that ultimately is the crux of what I am about to talk about today since it does involve the Bureau of Land Management. One of the very important things to me is that when you are a servant of the government, and as we have seen, a servant of the people, as we have seen in recent news stories, you are held to a higher standard because you are a servant of the people, not a servant of the government. That's an important point for what I'm about to talk about. The interesting thing that I have seen over the years is that there has been a flipping of that where uh, a lot of people that are in the governing authorities have felt like they don't serve the people, the people serve them, and it's just not that way. And so today I would like to, to break some information that I have obtained. Uh, it is a correspondence between Special Agent Larry C. Wooten to Andrew D. Goldsmith, who's the Associate Deputy Attorney General of the United States of America. and. Recently we've heard and you've reported on rumors that there has been a move to dismiss the case against the Bundys down in Nevada and what I'm about to tell you is probably one of the reasons why. And it has to do with the unethical, potentially illegal behavior uh, that was highlighted by Special Agent Wooten as a whistleblower in an email that, uh, or, or it looks like an email, uh, that we have confirmed the veracity of. And I want to just give you a little bit of a taste reading from this email of what Special Agent Wooten brought up as problems we found in the Bureau of Land Management, specifically in regards to the investigation of the Bundy family. 
Quote, I routinely observed in the investigation revealed a widespread pattern of bad judgment, lack of discipline, incredible bias, unprofessional and misconduct, unprofessionalism and misconduct, as well as likely policy, ethical, and legal violations among senior and supervisory staff at the BLM's Office of Law Enforcement and Security. When I reported these issues, my supervisor seemed generally unsurprised and uninterested and was dismissive and seemed unconcerned. Now, I want to set the stage a little bit here. Apparently, Special Agent Wooten was the case agent or the lead investigator for this case. Here's another quote from him. The longer the investigation went on, the more extremely unprofessional, familiar, racy, vulgar, and bias-filled actions, open comments, and inappropriate electronic communications I was made aware of or I personally witnessed, end quote. He then continues, quote, the ridiculousness of the conduct, unprofessional, amateurish, carnival atmosphere, openly made statements and electronic communications tended to mitigate the defendant's culpability and cast a shadow of doubt of inexcusable bias, unprofessionalism, and embarrassment on our agency, end quote. This is where it gets very uh, incredible because Special Agent Wooten brings up some very serious uh, allegations against his own agency and I want to kind of highlight what those are and then I would like to go through what specifically is written uh, in this correspondence. First, Special Agent Wooten says that there was the treatment of the Bundys in a, a manner that suggested they wanted to see a couple of members of the Bundy family either dead or harmed. And I want to be very specific about what he said about that in here. The second thing that's brought up is that there was an apparent withholding of exculpatory evidence that Mr. Wooten had brought to the attention of his supervisors. Uh, next was that there was allegations of sexual misconduct inside the BLM's law enforcement uh, arm and that also there were indeed at Bundy Ranch snipers that had been deployed. Now, it's interesting because I personally have been witnessing the news reports that have been out there, some of the things you've been breaking, that snipers were in fact maybe not there, and that that was the government's position in, in uh, a previous hearing. Uh, this document very clearly is the smoking gun, uh, not only in this case, but I believe an indictment of BLM itself. and maybe even potentially the prosecutors that are involved in this case and I want to read again some of the things that are in here because some of it is so outrageous that I will be sending a letter very specifically to Congress we will be sending a letter to Secretary Zinke and the Trump administration so that they can take the appropriate action and uh, prosecute the bad actors for some of the behavior that has occurred inside the BLM I also want to be very specific that the Trump administration uh, is probably going to be blindsided by this as I was blindsided by uh, this information coming to me and I believe that they have been doing the right thing when they have been given the facts and I, I have every confidence the Trump administration is going to do the right thing in this case to bring those to justice that have either violated the letter of the law or the spirit of the law or policies internal to BLM so let me go down a couple of these things that are in this correspondence again from Special Agent Wooten quote the misconduct caused considerable disruption in the workplace was discriminatory harassing and showed clear prejudice against the defendants their supporters and Mormons oftentimes the misconduct centered on being sexually inappropriate profanity appearance slash body shaming and likely violated privacy and civil rights next he says extreme bias and degrading flyers, uh, extreme, sorry, extremely biased and degrading flyers were also openly displayed and passed around the office. A booking photo of Clive and Bundy was and is inappropriately, openly, prominently, and proudly displayed in the office of a potential trial witness and my supervisor, and an altered, uh, degrading suspect photos were put in the office presentation by his supervisor. End quote. The next quote is, well, my supervisor even instigated the unprofessional monitoring of jail calls between defendants and their wives without prosecutor or FBI consent 
for the apparent purpose of making fun of the post-arrest telephone calls between Idaho defendants slash FBI targets, end quote. That is, a, that is an extraordinary statement, that they are admitting what seems to be a very clear violation of, if not policy, uh, the spirit or letter of the law. Uh, I also find it very interesting as well that they were putting things up in the office when some of those members of that office had to testify. Um, I think there are some very clear rules uh, that uh, say you should not do that um, for many different reasons. I will move next to some more comments that he had and then get into something that is probably the most shocking part of this entire uh, correspondence. Quote, this carnival, inappropriate, and childish behavior didn't stop with the directed bias and degradation of subjects of investigation. BLM law enforcement supervisors also openly talked about and gossiped about private employee personnel matters, such as medical conditions, work performance, marriage issues, religion, punishments, internal investigations, and derogatory opinions of high-level BLM supervisors. He also says, quote, there was a religious test of sorts, and he was personally asked, quote, you're not a Mormon, are you? And he was told, quote, I bet you think I'm going to hell, end quote. He continues, quote, that the investigation also indicated that on multiple occasions, former BLM special agent in charge, Love, specifically and purposely ignored U.S. Attorney's Office and BLM's civilian management direction and intent, as well as Nevada state official recommendations in order to command the most intrusive, oppressive, large-scale and militaristic trespass cattle impound possible, end quote. I want to comment on that for a second. If we, if government exists to protect the rights of life, liberty, and property, and you have now a special agent in charge questioning the handling of this situation, that it was intentionally made intrusive, oppressive, large-scale, and militaristic, we have a problem in America today. And those people that did this need to be held accountable for it. And I have, again, every confidence that Trump administration will do so. It's also interesting to note this that uh, Special Agent Wooten said that he had contacted Attorney Stephen Myrie and Assistant United States Attorney Nadia Ahmed, as well as the Federal Bureau of Investigation Special Agent Joel Willis by telephone on these issues. And as you read through the document, which we will post online here as soon as this segment is done, very specifically, he, he seems to imply that nothing was ever done by any of those folks. And I... I that, at the very least, needs to be investigated further if that is indeed the correct implication. But the most shocking part of this entire thing, I believe, is that the BLM law enforcement arm and one of his supervisors, quote, emailed out photographs of an arrest tracking wall in which Eric Parker and Cliven Bundy had X's through their face and body, and then he puts in quotation or in uh, parentheses indicating prejudice and bias in parentheses well I think that's a little bit more than prejudice and bias in my opinion because later in this document he says quote time after time I was told a former BLM special agent in charge loves misconduct I was told by BLM law enforcement supervisors that he had a kill book every American needs to understand what I just said that you have a special agent in charge that had a kill book. Well, was that turned over to the defense? How was that due process? I mean, there's a lot of questions this statement by Special Agent Wooten raises, but he continues, quote, as a trophy, and in essence bragged about getting three individuals in Utah to commit suicide, which is why I gave the statement I did at the beginning of of this segment because that is a that's probably one of the most startling statements I have ever read in any investigation I've ever been a part of in the last 15 years um, that is beyond startling but he goes on and he cites the specific operations uh, that were bragged about apparently operation Cerberus which I don't even know what that is but we'll find out and I know you've reported on it I think also uh, the failure rock and burning man special event where quote Unlo he, he was unlawfully uh, removing evidence, bragging about the number of OIG and internal investigations on him and indicating that he was untouchable, end quote. Those are some of the most shocking statements, again, that I have heard. Um, 
in a long time. And people may try to discredit Special Agent Wooten later, but internal to this document, he also says that he was removed from the case on February 18, 2017 by his super, supervisor despite his recently documented and awarded hard work and excellence and often praised performance within Bureau of Land Management. He says, quote, I am convinced that I was removed to prevent the ethical and proper further disclosure of the severe misconduct, failure to correct and report, and cover-ups by the BLM OLES supervision. Time after time, this is where he starts in about the kill book, but he goes on and says, I became convinced that my supervisor failed to properly disclose substantive and exculpatory case and witness uh, uh, bias-related issues to the United States Attorney General's office, which they have a duty to disclose exculpatory evidence. And since we don't know what's happening in these sealed hearings, I suspect this is what is giving rise to all the rumors that, that uh, this case is going to be dismissed. If, if this type of exculpatory evidence was withheld, I mean, my goodness. But it gets even more interesting when it talks about uh, in this document that Dave Bundy's iPad likely contained remarks from BLM law enforcement officers that is potentially evidence of civil rights violations and use of excessive force. Mr. Myrie, this is again talking about the attorney, the prosecutor, and my supervisor not only apparently failed to initiate the proper follow-on actions, Mr. Myrie apparently failed to notify defense counsel and also decided not to return the iPad back to Dave, and, uh, Dave Bundy, even though the iPad wasn't going to be searched pursuant to a search warrant or used as evidence at trial. Is this, is this the same uh, Stephen Myrie that is currently the acting U.S. attorney for the state and district of Nevada? Yes, I believe so. It is. And then we get to the end of this document, and I, I will end with this. Now, there was this this push by the government to make it seem like there were no snipers down there in Nevada. Now, when I went down there, it was very clear that there had been snipers there. People had pictures of them. There was a lot of talk about them. So I was kind of shocked when the government took the position that, that there were somehow not snipers down there. But Special Agent Wooten addresses that, quote, at least one school-trained federal sniper equipped with a scope magnified optic bolt action precision rifle and another federal officer equipped with a scoped magnified optic large frame caliber this 308 were in overwatch positions additionally the investigation also indicated the possibility that the FBI and the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department had law enforcement snipers designated mark marksmen on hand for possible deployment I want to talk about a few principles here that, that I have believed in and I know many Americans believe in, and, and that is that a sniper rifle is not due process. You know, going down there and putting sniper rifle in our country, and for those of us that have served in the United States military overseas, that is a, a startling statement that we had sniper rifles pointed at American citizens without any due process whatsoever. It's also startling that some of these things, and I don't know what has been talked about in these sealed uh, hearings, but it appears that some of these things and more of these things have not been disclosed to the American people. And going back to what I originally stated with the Public Records Act intent here in Washington State, these things not only uh, need to be disclosed to the American people, I believe we have a duty to disclose them to the American people. Because this right here is the smoking gun that what so many people believed had actually gone on behind the scenes in Nevada actually did go on behind the scenes at least according to Special Agent Wooten. And because of that, again, I am going to be taking action on this. We have, again, 435,000 BLM acres in Washington State, and in our oversight capacity in the legislature, we have to, if there is any agency, any level of government, we have taken an oath to defend the Constitution of both the United States and the Constitution of the state of Washington. And this impacts all Americans that this behavior in a federal agency was potentially tolerated, was potentially covered up, was potentially trying to be hidden from the American people. And this at the very least warrants an investigation. I believe, you know, Special Agent Wooten had uh, done this and come forward as a whistleblower as he believes in America. And if his statements in here uh, are accurate and correct, then there needs to be fired from the BLM and prosecuted from the BLM, and also potentially if the evidence was withheld.
potentially from the prosecutor's office, but that's for somebody else to evaluate, not me. My job is to bring this to the public and to make sure that we follow up on this with all the power that we have to ensure an accurate investigation is done at the congressional level and also by Secretary Zinke and the Department of Interior. Has Secretary Zinke been informed of any of this? Do you know? I do not know if he has been informed of any of this. I, again, suspect that he's probably going to be blindsided by this, as I was, because it's very clear as you read this document um, that Special Agent Wooten is saying that there, were, there was information being withheld or intentionally kept compartmentalized. So I would suspect that would mean from superiors, but I don't know. Again, that, that would be total specu speculation. But I, I suspect that uh, he is going to watch this video. And I know that he uh, has a heart for doing the right thing. So uh, again, the Trump administration, I have every faith and trust that they will do the right thing to bring those to justice that need to be brought to justice and to rectify this horrific situation. You said you're going to share this document. That's a, quite a large document. It's like 18 pages, if I remember right, that you, didn't, didn't you say 18? It, it is, yeah, it's 17 or 18, yeah. So we'll be sharing it online uh, on my Facebook page and uh, be more than happy to make sure it gets shared over to uh, Readout News. Uh, Absolutely. But uh, this, this is going to, I think, uh, change the way that many Americans uh, view some of the things uh, that we have maybe trusted for a very long time like myself. And uh, uh, there's, you know, there's always good and bad actors in any organization and uh, we need to root out the bad actors, and that's what I aim to do by sending letters and making sure that Congress follows through uh, on this and taking a look into this, this serious, serious matter. Well, I certainly hope that representatives in all the Western states follow your lead and get to the bottom of this because it certainly affects everybody. Well, you certainly have some great representatives in Idaho, uh, Congressman Raul Labrador, uh, Representative Dorothy Moon, been doing a great job over there, and I'm going to make sure they get a hold of this as well. Thank you very much, Matt. Appreciate your diligence on this. Would you like to add any final words? I think, you know, Thomas Jefferson hit the nail on the head that, that we have to be eternally vigilant if we want to remain free, and I think that holding government agents accountable that... Uh, have strayed off the course is part of that eternal vigilance. Will you let us know if you get reactions from um, Secretary Zinke or even the Trump administration? We would dearly love to follow that one with you. Absolutely, and uh, I, I would love to follow up with you again as, as Readout News has been doing a great job covering this entire thing, and I want to thank you uh, as well for all your diligence down there to bring a lot of the things that uh, were not public to the public spotlight. We have uh, just shared with you Representative Matt Shea and the smoking gun for the BLM. Stay tuned. You will be able to read the document yourself.